You remember high school, right? High school. Especially in the 1980s. It was magic. No one had phones. We were all present, even when skipping class. And experiences were unmediated. There was no filter. Nothing in between ourselves and experiences. We didn't overthink things then. We just did what we wanted, said what we wanted to say. And we had our own place in the groups that we were in. And we were accountable, personally, because we were actually in person. We barely have any record of what happened then because we were in it. I remember in high school, the parking lot was a manifestation of the social scene, a map of the hierarchy. Nerds take the closest spot or the furthest. Drama kids had their spot. The jocks parked closer to the football field. Metalheads parked in the unpaved section, the gravel where life was grittier, louder, hair was longer. Aviation, same thing. We were all students and all linked under one banner and we liked to visit other sides of the parking lot. But ultimately, we are all in the gravel here. We are more or less the metalheads in the community that I'm in. We are all midlife pilots, and none of us really have any traditional use for flying. We just love it. We want to be in the band of aviation and pilots. And even if we just play the equivalent of a house party or a local dive, that's enough for us. We aren't trying to make it, but we take it as seriously as if we were. Uh, What's up, my man? Good to see you. Hey, do, you have, do you have to run the air conditioning? Is everything okay? Uh, Are you guys, did you get uncomfortable at all? Uh, no, okay. Like What's up, my man? Buddy. Welcome. Thank you. Glad to be here. I'll say this. It is busy AF around here. Making it is not what it used to be anyway, whether in the music industry or any crevice of modern culture. All experience now is mediated. It is experienced through others' experiences, or if even our own, through screens or other devices. Less and less tangible is happening to cement experience. During the pandemic, and even now, we've all been so isolated and we remain isolated often in our lives at this age. What's up, my man? But we learned how to fly during that time. And now it's all about sharing the experience in real life and amplifying our lives in tandem as we all go about our own aviation journey, which really is a life journey, a life decision based on a choice to fully live and be honest about the risks and reap the rewards and do it in that way. The metalheads and punks cast themselves out as much as they were cast out a deliberate means of having a personality, differentiation. It gave their group definition. They basked in being disaffected, defiant, but alive with energy to get into what they were into most, the music and all of the things that come with it. Going to shows, wearing the shirts, sporting the wares of their culture trade. But we aren't metalheads and we aren't in high school anymore. Hell, there isn't even really an office or a workplace anymore. Unmediated experience is a commodity now. Even more rarefied, making new friends when you are middle-aged. Most of the metalheads from the 80s have likely gone on to be insurance agents or carpenters or VPs or whatever. And that's their crowd now. That's their parking lot. The din of rumbling exhaust has been supplanted with eco silence and professional boundaries. I hope they found things they love as much as they did heavy metal in the 1980s. I am so glad to have found a tribe as this part of my life manifests and grows. I know where to park now. When I started to learn how to fly, 
It was like I was the only metalhead at my school. I didn't have any friends or peers to show me the way. I was on my own. I began publishing my training videos and subsequent documentary short pieces that marry a bit of creative thinking and aviation. And slowly I built a small group of like-minded new pilots as friends that appreciated what I was doing and related to it and have supported my work with enthusiasm and camaraderie. I don't think of them as an audience, but rather people I'm along the ride with. They're on their own journeys as well and can relate. One of the documentary shorts I created was around this idea I have that helps me when I get creatively stuck or feel any kind of option paralysis between me and getting something done. I remind myself, nobody cares. And I get on with what I was doing without stopping so much to consider anything more than what is my muse or the spark of my idea. So nobody cares is my creative manifesto of sorts, cynical as it sounds, nobody cares. It's fun to say. It's cliche and stupid and funny as that whole phrase is. I mean, it's, it is the only way I get anything done. I know it sounds fatalistic, pithy, or like a complaint, but it's really none of those things. It's actually, strangely, the path I can follow to be most sure that someone will care about what I make. It makes it more pure. It's how I get past indecision and keep forward movement. Parking brake is set. Fuel is on the proper tank in the detent. Left tank. Trim is set for takeoff. Enunciator panel. We'll go mixture best power. Throttle up to 2,000. Left mag. Good drop. Back to both. Right mag. Good drop. Back to both. Suction is good. Oil pressure and oil temperature are good. My rear heat is good. Idle is good. Ammeter is good. Friction lock is good. All right, we'll take our fuel pump off. Take our fuel pressure Ground again. 20, two, zero, Back up to 1,000. Everyone run up complete. So we're going to go ahead and bug the runway. Flaps are set. Electric fuel pump on. Tango. Doors are latched. Fuel selectors on the proper tank, left tank, and the deep end. Engine gauges all still good. Primer is locked. Controls are free. We've already checked those. But I know the abort plan, and we're ready for the departure call. Two pumps on. Lights are on. Departure two three two. We'll make a left down one departure to the south. Remain west. The final runway two. Quick takeoff. Traffic Cessna upwind. Follow him into the down one. We all have even more in common than aviation. We all have people that we care about, things we'd like to accomplish, and a drive to make the most of the time that we have. We also all want to connect with others. It's nearly a lost art in these times of screens and evaporating time. But building a community through aviation or any commonality in a meaningful way makes all the study, the work, the time, money, hardships endured, all of it makes it worth it. that community it's that small group shared interest and it doesn't matter if you're in Portland Oregon or even in Pittsburgh it we're all the same number two three kilo you can proceed on course to Lama. on course to Lama, and we had that traffic inside thanks for your help two kilo I think that we have a community of people who are not kids anymore. We're in our 40s and 50s, and but we're still new at this. 
and we're still learning. And I think it takes a certain amount of humility and a certain amount of just accepting, being able to face your weaknesses in the mirror and try to get better at them to, uh, to try something this different at this point in our lives. And that combination, I think, is really what I found useful in this group of people. Sky catcher 779, contact Memphis 128.15. 128.15. This is it. Like, the, you can't say this is in service of a greater good. There, there's no money to be made off of this. This is it. Yeah, it makes me happy. It's a huge accomplishment. It was so much more than I thought it was going to be. And it just, it was, it consumed so much more than I thought it was going to. And yet it's just been really rewarding. To me, that's the deal is it's like, what am I doing with my life, with my time? And this is a great thing. And calling, uh, somebody called off a of John Tune. Looks like you're maybe 2,800 feet or so now. What's the uh, call sign? November 246, Delta Micro Sierra Cessar 22. I would like to play following to Tango Hotel Alpha. Thanks a lot. 5563. 5563, 6 Delta Micro. Sierra 6 Delta Micro to contact a 3 altimeter 3031. When are you going to call on to? basically a bunch of heroin junkies that are like, well, you want to do heroin on Thursday? And they were like, yeah. <laughs> it's not like some huge, you know. Number 2123 Kilo, contact Memphis Center 128.15. 28.15, 2 3 Kilo, thanks. And Memphis Center, Archer 2123 Kilo, 5,500. November 2123 Kilo, Memphis Center, National Altimeter 3032. 3032, 2123 Kilo.
Perfect, I'll get you on two, three kilos, left base, one eight, Tullahama. Uh, Tullahama traffic, two, two, four, six, south Mike, flying over the numbers, uh, for left down one, through one eight, traffic off to our right hand side. Tullahama traffic, Archer, two, one, two, three kilos, final one eight, Tullahama. I could go to the Beechcraft Museum by myself, or I could go experience the things that we got to do at the airports we went to today by myself, and they would be cool. But there is a magic that happens when you're with a collective group and they're shared. And yeah, I think that's probably it for me for this weekend was just all of the cool things with a group of people that I care about and shared experiences are just so meaningful. I'm happy to report that there are people who really care. Making new friends when you are midlife is strange. You are in between the old friends you probably don't speak to as much anymore, but you know, you can pick up any time with them. And new friends are created in the idiom of this new, busy. Then there is this group, a different kind of people, with different backgrounds, living all over the country, in different worlds. And yet we connect and we look out for each other because the spirit of the aviation community is just that, a spirit and an enthusiasm that transcends politics, socioeconomics, beliefs, or anything else the greater culture uses to keep us apart. Nobody cares about your religion, your politics, your team, your vote. Nobody cares about anything here in the gravel section of the aviation community that we have. We just love to fly and we respect each other's passion and hard work. It takes so much to become a pilot, and to be a good pilot takes even more dedication. It's pretty damn cool to have a wildly and enthusiastic crew to hang with, fly with, and hang out with in the gravel section of the aviation parking lot.